There's almost nothing more tightly tied to economic progression and success, the amelioration of absolute poverty, than decreased energy cost. I mean, that's a, it's almost a one-to-one -one relationship because energy is work and work is productivity and productivity is wealth. And so <laughs> that's not much of a complex causal scheme. It also turns out that if you get the average GDP of absolutely, of the absolutely poverty stricken, up to about 5,000 US dollars per year, they start taking a long-term view of environmental sustainability at the local level. Because instead of having to scrabble for their lunch in the dirt and burn dung, they can start thinking about what sort of greenery might be around for their children. In this thought-provoking video, Jordan Peterson delves into the often overlooked connection between energy costs and financial struggle. With his characteristic insight, Peterson explores how the price of energy impacts individuals' economic well-being, shedding light on a crucial yet underdiscussed aspect of poverty. Peterson argues that high energy costs place a significant burden on individuals and families, exacerbating financial hardship and perpetuating cycles of poverty. By elucidating the intricate link between energy affordability and economic stability, he challenges viewers to reconsider conventional approaches to addressing financial inequality. Right, and so it seems to me that instead of following the green pathway, so to speak, and, and pointing to the utility of fusion energy as a substitute for fossil fuels, which in, in principle might become more expensive as they become more scarce, and which also could be used perhaps more wisely for the production of chemicals rather than like, to burn. Exactly, because it's a rootstock, well, right? Yes. Well, yeah, absolutely, limited, absolutely. Yes. And, and absolutely, and, and for fertilizer as well, let's say, um, that beating the drum for driving the cost of energy down to the lowest possible level, you know, conceivable, seems to me to be a, a more appropriate and potentially deeper long-term, say, public relations strategy. Like, what could we do with the world if we had an inexhaustible source of inexpensive energy? I mean, it makes enterprises like um, desaloniz desalinization, for example, widely possible. And, and, well, that would be a wonderful thing, given that, in principle, we're going to be facing water shortages in the future as well. So I'm wondering, What's, what's your view with regards to the viability of fusion as a genuinely inexpensive and universally available source, apart from the fact of its cleanliness and safety, which is obviously relevant? Yeah, right. So that, that, is, that is actually the challenge, I would argue, in front of us as technologists who pr pr propose fusion, um, um, fusion energy systems, right? Is that I feel, you know, my belief is that we've gotten past the point where we were pretty, because we've demonstrated so many of the different parts of the system. Like the science of it, while it sounds like science fiction, has actually been done. By the way, for example, 100 million degrees, which sounds like science fiction. You know, on the optimistic side, we have, we have quite a world waiting for us if we're sensible and fortunate. I mean, you can imagine that, imagine here, so, I know a group of people who are avidly pursuing atomic level deposition in 3D printing, which opens up the possibility that we'll literally be able to print anything we can model and then at scale and then very inexpensively. And so just God only knows what that's going to produce. And these aren't pie in the sky technologies. These sorts of printers already exist and they're working very hard on making them economically viable and distributable and dirt cheap as well, eventually. And so that's remarkable. And then we have these AI systems that are now conversation level that I can envision being put into technologies that will be able to teach every child on earth, every single subject there is at their level of comprehension and also exceedingly inexpensively. And then with this, if this can I just give an anecdote to that? Actually, sure, yes. sure. Because we're both we're both professors, or have been professors, and it's uh, 
I recall my colleagues when ChatGPT came out, they were rapidly using, you know, they were checking to see, well, how would students like cheat basically using yeah, ChatGPT yeah. and got all the, and they're putting qualifying exam questions and so forth. And like my comment to them was, you might be not realizing whose job this might imperil. <laughs> yeah, uh, no kidding. They, they, they played, right? What does this mean? But, but by the way, it's like, if, as it, I, 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 as usual with these big disruptive ones, which I think Fusion would be as well too, people probably look at it a little bit incorrectly is that if I, by the way, one of the, I'm sorry for the sideline, but you know, one of the greatest challenges we have right now in Fusion is people. And it's because this transition from a science only program to thinking about integrated engineering energy products happens right, so right. fast. Basic, in fact, I just wrote a paper. It just, in fact, I'm giving a seminar, a uh, national webinar on Friday about it. It's uh -huh. like our academic system is just like, because it's frozen in that place that it was, you know, 50, like academic systems are, right? They tend yeah. to have really long lag times and lead times. It's like, oh my gosh, it's like, we are not ready for this at all. <laughs> right. And right, so, in right. fact, we don't even have the right distributions of kinds of expertise and faculty and so forth. And so, like, Oh, well, what, what if in fact I, you know, and there's set of, what if I can, cause I, one of my, I would argue my specialties is, is integrated fusion design analysis. And that's one of, one of my classes. I get uh -huh. to teach, you know, order 15 to 20 students every one or two years at MIT. What if I can teach thousands of students of that through AI? Like, right, wow, right, absolutely. Right? And so the yep. synergies in this are amazing. The other part, well, which is in fact, we just signed an agreement with the International Atomic Energy Agency that we are now, we are active and very, very actively pursuing um, AI use to basically be the entity that runs the power plant. 